In this topic, we will present two important aspects of discontinuities, namely the roughness and shear strength. These two properties are critical when it comes to the stability of a rock mass in which discontinuities are present. Unlike for the intact rock, the mechanics of a rock joint is that of a contact between two rock walls. As we can see on this figure, these walls can contain more or less asperities and hence be more or less rough. They can be perfectly matched or mismatched. They can be unfilled, partially or fully filled. Filling can occur as a result of a chemical process such as precipitation, by weathering of the walls or simply by deposition of a soil. Roughness is an important parameter because it contributes to the shear strength of a rock joint. Let's see how with these specimens. We here have a specimen which is rather smooth and we can see that it's quite easy to displace the two parts of the specimen. On the other hand, we here have a specimen which is rougher and we see that it's more difficult to displace the two parts of the specimen. This is because we have an interlocking effect of the asperities of the surface. The roughness is commonly quantified using the joint roughness coefficient, also called JRC. JRC is a visual measurement of the roughness of a joint profile. It ranges from 0 to 2 for a flat, smooth surface and goes up to 18 or 20 for very rough joints. Some methods were proposed to infer JRC quantitatively rather than qualitatively, but we don't have the time to detail them in this topic. You might wonder why there is an indication of 10 cm on the figure here presenting JRC. This is because roughness is scale dependent. When looking at the joint on this figure, overall, it contains gentle undulations. If you look at it more closely, you can now perceive details that you could not see before and it seems rougher. This is evidenced on the close-up. If you now could touch the joint, you would feel a texture maybe like sandpaper. So the perception of roughness is different at each scale. Discontinuities or rock joints typically have a low tensile strength. When it comes to their contribution to the strength of a rock mass, it is mainly via their shear strength. For example, on this sketch, if the slope is stable and no block has fallen, it is because the joints have enough strength to resist shearing or sliding. The shear strength of a rock joint or discontinuity is typically measured using a direct shear test where a load is applied initially normally to the joint before this later is sheared. During the test, the tangential force T required to displace one part of the joint is recorded together with the actual displacement W. N and T are later converted to stresses by dividing them by the contact area of the joint, A. This figure shows a typical tangential stress, tangential displacement curve, where a peak can be observed followed by a plateau called residual value. The peak value is typically the value used to define the shear strength of the rock joint. As for intact rock, the value of shear strength is not unique and depends on the level of confinement or the magnitude of the normal load applied to the joint. So it is required to define a failure criterion. And as for intact rock, the higher the level of confinement or normal load, the higher the shear strength. An example of failure criterion is given in this figure. Under low confinement, the walls tend to override, while at high confinement, the asperities tend to be sheared off. You can see that the evolution of shear strengths is typically non-linear with the vertical confinement. We said in an earlier topic that water flows in rock joints and that water can be detrimental to the stability of a rock mass. Why is that? As water flows in a rock joint and water pressure develops, this pressure will counteract the normal force acting on a joint, hence reducing the effective force acting on the contact. By reducing the confinement, it reduces the shear strength. Discontinuities and rock joints contribute to the mechanics of a rock mass via the shear strength, and it is most important to know that roughness and water does affect the shear strength of discontinuities.